All right, everyone, we're back. Boros episode 209. After a one week break, we are back with the series. Now, I must say the last episode, based on where we ended, or based on the contents of that last episode, we kind of covered the events of, or some of the events of chapter 43 and 44. It was kind of a, like a mixed bag for the most part. I was kind of checking it back this morning to kind of refresh my memory. So, you know that does signify that they're kind of slowing down the pacing and adding additional stuff and based on the preview for this episode it definitely is going to be a super anime original episode so let's see where it's going to go it's going to involve himawari and kawaki so this should be interesting to say the least so yeah so i guess for manga readers we're just gonna have to hold out just a bit more for the madness that's going to unfold by the time the end of august or at least by next week's episode rolls around so it is what it is but yo if you're new here be sure to leave a like of course it does help me out um if you like boruto you can definitely subscribe <laughs> i hope you guys are having an awesome day let's see what this episode has to offer all right got all these panning shots oh shit <laughs> well <laughs> that went dark real fast Wild dreams, Britta. You know, in a recent chapter, and we're having chapter 6 with him liking high places. Seems only, you know, legit that he's here on the rooftop. Well, specifically, he likes the view of the village. <laughs> this man is asking about Konohamaru. <laughs> Like, I appreciate... <laughs> I appreciate them mentioning him at least, but it's just funny. You know, I don't mind this episode. Whenever we get Himawari episodes, it's usually good. Can't resist the Himawari cuteness, dog. You just have to help our own. Yo, I love that, that shot of Kowaki. Yeah, sorry about that. So as I was saying, I, I really like that shot where we had um Kowaki walking past. Because it's because the episode already is already comparing things between Kowaki and the wolf. Like it's a kind of symbolic comparison, essentially. Of course, the outcast, obviously. <laughs> so it's like him walking. It's kinda of like it showed to me like Kowaki deep down is like not surprised. Kind of expected something like this to happen. So is that that's the kind of vibe I get with that scene with Kawaki just walking across the screen. It's just so beautiful, dog. I'm not gonna lie. But I'm a Kawaki Gander because I said this is a super anime original episode, so I, I don't even know what to, to expect. Oh well yeah, if we're basing things off the wolf, he's gonna leave the village. Alright, so for some reason the recording kind of messed up for that last part, so this section here isn't like a genuine, genuine first reaction. But I want to at least give up my commentary on, <laughs> on this part because I kind of just found it funny. It kind of felt like we were having like a, you know, dog, you're trying to leave the village. Listen, dog, if I have to break your arms and legs kind of moving. <laughs> if you catch the reference, you catch the reference. Yo! But what I like though is, I mean, I want to say like my full thoughts of the review, but I like that we even got Shikamaru here. You know, a lot of persons, and I've been giving him a bit of flack myself in terms of how he's been being a bit extra, but he has his, you know, logical reasons. But, you know, it's in this moment that you see that Shikamaru, like, even though he doesn't change his position, he wants to like be that middle ground between what Naruto wants and supporting what Naruto wants and you know having the safety of the village in a non-danzo way, you know what I mean? I'm just speaking the facts, honestly. Honestly, this episode was really good. Really good, really good. Alright, I think I'll just switch to my eh, thoughts on the the episode here. All right, so if I'm being honest, <laughs> apologies for the 
technical issues for the first section of the reaction. I had my mic audio and <laughs> the audio for the episode on one audio track because I had set it that way for the stream I had a few days ago and then I had some technical difficulties towards the end. So sorry about that. But anyway, on to my thoughts on this episode, right? Now, episode 209, an anime, like what I call a super anime only episode. It's as a manga reader, when you're getting into more juicy stuff and we're almost there and then you get an episode that kind of detracts from that. Like in some case, filler, anime, original, whatever the case may be, it can be a jarring experience. But when it comes down to episode 209, The Outcast, I, it's the complete opposite. I dare say, and I'm going to go on record and say, obviously, I don't believe manga readers are going to have a big problem with an episode like this. More often than not, the Boruto anime is at its best when A, it's adapting the manga, B, it's adding stuff that enhances the quality of the content from the manga, whether it be, for example, in recent times, the Kara activation arc, the latter half at least, or the additional scenes and things that have been added to patch out the piercing of the manga in, you know, since we've entered the Kowaki arc, or C, when we're getting wholesome, you know, slice of life episodes regarding the Uzumaki household. And this episode kind of represents a combination of points B and C. And it's because of this, I think this is going to be a very welcome episode, potentially even a rewatch episode when it comes on to the Boruto anime. As we focus on not only Himawari, but Kawaki in this episode as the plot revolves around stealing food from the Uzumaki household to feed a starving white wolf that Himawari has somewhat befri befriended in Kanoa, one of the forests is close to Kanoa or in Kanoa, whatever the case may be. And as I said, this episode really combines the best elements I feel of you know, points B and C of when the Boruto anime is at its best, as I said, expanding on the content from the manga, or extreme slice of life with the Uzumaki household. And the upside to that, it's basically a Himawari and Kowaki episode. Like, probably two of the more are the better well, better received characters when, when it comes on to the new generation. Kowaki being definitely top three new characters, and Himawari is Himawari. Like, you can't hate her. She's she, she, she's She's Himawari, isn't it? So it's kind of like the best of both worlds when it comes down to this episode. Now, the episode being called The Outcast and, you know, coming from watching the preview for this episode, if you've been watching the show, logically, you already knew what you were going to get with this episode. An episode that's going to compare Kawaki in some symbolic or metaphoric sense to the white wolf that's being presented in this episode. And that's exactly what we got. And the episode was all the well, all the better because of it. Because at the end of the day, we get to see Kawaki's evolving mindset when it comes on to you know his place in the village and his role and what he feels he needs to do to protect his quote unquote new home. So that's always welcome when it comes on to you know Kawaki's character. And funny enough, we are getting that in the Boruto manga, especially with the recent chapter. No big spoilers, but I mean, that's to be expected. So as a side note, looking back on it in hindsight now, getting an episode like this, you'd think, manga readers, you know, you'd think we get an episode like this if Kodachi was still writing the manga, but at the same time, Kishimoto's decided to kind of slow down the pacing and give us content like what we got in this episode. So I'm wondering if it's kind of, I wonder if it's going to become kind of redundant to, you know, always be exploring Kawaki's mindset in terms of his place in the village. Like, it's great, but I'm wondering if it's going to be running the risk of becoming too repetitive. You know what I mean? So just food for thought. But anyway, back to the episode in terms of my thoughts. So, mm, first of all, 
<laughs> Himawari and the White Wolf. Himawari being Himawari, you know, the kind, gentle daughter of Naruto. Nice to see. It, it's just kind of wholesome and cute. So I think that does an excellent job of drawing you into the episode in terms of, you know, kind of building you up, kind of giving that warm feeling and warm reception to the episode, even though it's not the, the hardcore manga material that we'd want to see. Well, get into next because stuff with Kosh and Koji is coming up. So. That's, I think that's the hook of the episode. And of course, setting things up with, you know, Kawaki and his reasoning to why he doesn't want to train with Boruto kind of starts to set things up for, you know, the Kawaki um, Himawari dynamic. So that was good to see. So they did a pretty good job of hooking us with what this episode was going to be about. So there's that. No. Also, Kawaki and the dream sequences. Yo, <laughs> yo, the beginning of the episode, like, I wasn't expecting that transition. Yo, <laughs> that was wild. But it's good to see because you get a more, I guess, visceral or, you know, show don't tell kind of moment with how Kawaki feels about his place in the village that we didn't necessarily get in the manga at this point in time. And as I said, we are kind of getting stuff like this in the manga now. So, you know, it's, eh, it, it's great. It's great at the end of the day. So I like that as well. And you get to just see how his mindset is evolving. And it's, it's, it, it's kind of like as some persons would say, um, even though Boruto wasn't really involved much, much in this episode like that. But the point is, Kawaki and Boruto are the Naruto Sasuke dynamic of this generation, obviously. And I think they're doing a much better job of building up things with Kawaki and Boruto than Naruto and Sasuke for the eventual split. Because getting to see Kawaki's mindset and how he's evolving, it kind of builds toward... It kind of builds things, the tension for that... that that split that we know he's going to have with the Uzumaki family. And, you know, it adds weight. It's going to be building and adding weight to that emotional reaction that we're going to have once things do split. It's going to be that much more emotional. And I think it's being done in a much better fashion than, you know, Naruto and Sasuke. Because some person would say, was Sasuke really Naruto's friend? And they'd compare with, say, Shikamaru seems like he was a better friend than than, than Sasuke. So it's kind of like a situation like that where an episode like this kind of adds to the the pros the pros and the positives when it comes on to Kawaki and his mindset and seeing him develop in relation to the Uzumaki household, etc, etc, for the eventual split. I feel like I kind of went on a tangent there, but you get what I mean. So there's that. No. As I said, I do love the projection and the comparisons and the symbolic um projections kind of put it like that between Kawaki and the wolf in this episode um you see it when Kawaki is breaking things down and explaining and you know just explain his understanding of the wolf's place in nature right now to Himawari you can see he's projecting from his experience and he even says that to Himawari so it's like <laughs> it's just Kawaki reaffirming what he his developments, his character developments until now, but because of his constant words and evolving outlook on his place in Konoha, we see him building up to leaving the village, writing a letter to Naruto or, you know, Hinata, and it's basically the same thing he projects onto the wolf when it dies in this episode, where he feels like the wolf sacrificed himself so that the rest of the pack could live. And that's basically what we were getting in this episode with him leaving the village and Boruto about to be, you know, be a whole, the whole Naruto, you I'm going to break your hands and legs, Sam. <laughs> well, he didn't say that, obviously, but, you know, I, I just can't say that for the fun of it. So, I like that. I like that. And I mean, you can't really blame Kawaki. I mean, I think these thoughts and these feelings that he's projecting and he's what he, he's doing what he can do to actually protect the village. I think it's only natural. But I also loved how Shikamaru came in there and was like, yo fam. Because I mean, I've been giving Shikamaru flack for being very extreme as well, but he's been making the logical decisions too. But I like how he kind of balances those things between his position on Kawaki his position on Boruto and his position on Naruto in this episode, just kind of juggling his role between the three 
those three, you know, characters and what he needs to do for the village. So, no points for Shikamaru in this episode. So, that was good. And I really love that, yo, aren't we brothers moment, really? Like... Mm. It, it just it just really hit home in terms of the feels and just being overall wholesome while at the same time adding on to Kawaki and his character arc kind of reinforcing that so as I said at the end of the day it was kind of like the best of both worlds between being a slice of life and you know having stuff that enhances the quality of the content from the manga in this episode well this with that being Kawaki's character in this episode so there there was definitely that so i'm looking forward to seeing what next episode has to offer and yeah yeah <laughs> so anyway let me know what you guys thought about my thoughts on the episode um as i said i just really love the comparison between kawaki and the wolf and what he's just his evolving mindset it really adds to it's that build up towards the eventual split and having an episode like this really just adds to adds points to uh, you know what i mean when the split happens it's going you're going to feel it that much more this episode is one of those episodes that really build towards ensuring that and for that i loved it so yeah but anyway sanji with you here guys i think i've rambled on long enough hope you guys are having an awesome sunday so thanks for tuning in if you made it this far leave a like let's talk it out in the comment section and i'll see you in the next boruto video mm -hmm.